Hello everyone, welcome to Wrath of Math Lessons. I'm your host, Sean E, and in today's video, we're talking about one and its primeness. Is it prime? Well, spoiler alert, one is not prime, as I've, as I've written here. One is not prime, and that doesn't need to be proven. That is by definition. A prime number is any number, any integer greater than one, such that so-and-so, you know how the story goes. You know what a prime number is, I hope. If not, I've got videos on that. You can check those out. Um, so one is not prime. So the question becomes not is one prime, but it becomes why isn't one prime. And I think there's two decent reasons um, that I could tell you to explain this, although one of them is more so the real reason and uh, what I would find the better reason because it's more so the real one. But you could think of prime numbers as sort of being defined by having exactly two unique factors, right? So if n is prime, then n has two unique factors being 1 and n. So 1 and n divide n. If n is prime, these are the only factors of n, and they are unique, um, so they're distinct, rather, is the correct word. 1 and n are distinct. But that's that's not really why, though. So, so if 1 and n have to be distinct, then of course 1 is not prime, because n would also be 1, and 1 is not different from 1, obviously. So that's a way to think about it, some way to justify 1 not being prime, but the real reason is because of a fundamental theorem um, that's very important. And of course, since we define what prime numbers are, we basically left one out of the prime number definition just to make maths work better. So the fundamental theorem I'm referring to is aptly titled the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. And the fundamental theorem of arithmetic goes by a few other names like the unique prime factorization theorem or the prime factorization theorem. And what the fundamental theorem of arithmetic says is that for every integer greater than one, or excuse me, every integer greater than one is either prime or it has a unique prime factorization. So for example, you pick a number like seven, that's an integer greater than one, it's either prime or it has a unique prime factorization. In seven's case, it's prime. But if you look at a number like six, six is not prime, and it has a unique prime factorization, namely three times two. But what if one was prime? Well, if one was prime, this theorem, either you need to add a little um, complication in there that you can't use one, or the theorem is just, it completely breaks down. As it is, um, as it is now, if you just added one into the list of primes, the theorem would no longer be true because you could take this factorization, right? This is one factorization of six, but we could also write it as this. This would be another prime factorization of six, and this would be another prime factorization of six, and so on. So you can see how that could go. You could just keep multiplying by one, which every time you did that, it would be a new distinct um, unique prime fat, excuse me, not unique, but distinct prime factorization. So if we let one be prime, then the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, again, is either not true or we have to overcomplicate it. And so it's easier to just say one is not prime. And of course, that's totally up to us. Um, it's just a word that we have defined um, for a particular class of numbers and one is not in that class of numbers and things work out a lot better that way. So be grateful for it and uh, poor one, the loneliest number, but what are you gonna do? So thank you very much for watching. I hope this video helped you understand why one is not a prime number. Um, a couple reasons, you know, a way to sort of justify it to yourself and more so the real reason with the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. In any event, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or need anything clarified or wanna talk about prime numbers. If you've got any other video requests, let me know. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. I can hear your voice from all the way up here, dear. Won't you please come to me? You love it up here, dear. There's a light where I float that erases.